the earth, there was all type of things that you were supposed to have in possession. Your possessions. There were things that you were supposed to have in your clothes, in your housing, in your living arrangements. There are things that God, he reserves those things for you when you start to operate in the spirit. Living in the spirit is fought by the flesh because it's Satan's device to stop you from unveiling the true plan of God concerning you. When you get in the spirit, there are people that you'll no longer see. There are things that you'll no longer experience. There are victories that you will rejoice in, but it's in the spirit. Until you get in the spirit, you will not see how God wanted you to see because there's our eyes in the flesh. There's our eyes in the fleshly mind. There's a perspective and opinion. There's a focus in the fleshly mind. What is really bondage? Bondage is a eyesight that comes from the fleshly mind. When you're in bondage and you're imprisoned with a, a concept, a perception, that's why some people, their perception is that they have to sin. That's bondage. Some people's perception is I have to make a mistake because I'm human. That is bondage. And inside of bondage is deception. The deceiver has to have success over your brain in order for bondage to continue. So when people are in bondage, that means that there is a lie of Satan that they have put their trust in. There is confidence in falsehood. There is belief in deceit. Before you came to the earth, there was things that God wanted you to have, experience, and possess. He doesn't give it to you all at once. He lets you travel from one glory to the next glory, one faith to the next faith. That's why Adam was placed in a garden, but there was other gardens. There was other locations that he was going to unlock. God created the whole earth, but he put Adam in the garden, which means that Adam was going to travel throughout the whole earth and inherit the whole earth. But God put him in the garden to see how are you going to deal with this knowledge, this proximity, this vicinity, this location, this geography. And that's how God thinks. He pits you in one place for a moment, sees how you handle that place, sees your grade level in that place, sees what you score in that place, see what you produce in that place, see your fruitfulness in that place, your grade level in that place. So that's why you give your all to every place that you're at. Whether you're at the hotel room, whether you're in a hospital bed, whether you're in a homeless shelter, whether you live underneath a bridge, whether you are living with somebody, you always give God the best of yourself because he is grading you because there is always another place that he wants you to go. But he can't take you there if you're not in the spirit. You're not in the spirit just because you think you're ready to go to the next level. You're in the spirit, actually, when the next level is not even just your focus. It's just about Jesus's heart. You want Jesus's heart to get a good experience from you momentarily. Every moment of your life, you want Jesus to get a good experience from you. You want his soul to be pleased with your conduct, with your thoughts. You have to constantly deal with yourself inwardly. There's a way to talk to God without moving your mouth. It's your mind. How do you think that you enter into the true speed of conversation with God? It's not verbal. You can ask God questions mentally and he'll answer you mentally. But this is a zone that you have to wait to get in and you have to uh, practice because this is how people get deceived and led astray by wrong voices because they have not become professional in this department of conversation. You don't get here overnight and you don't get here just two days. You, you have to practice daily to talk to God with your mind and you'll be shocked how he talks to you mentally without you moving your mouth. 
when you're at the workplace, you can't let people see you talking, talking to yourself and stuff like that. You can't let your boss see you talking to yourself. God knows that. And so um, you're in a car with people. You can't let them hear all your conversation with God. You can be asking God something. So you learn to talk to the Lord with your mind. That's why um, if a person masters talking to God in their mind, they could be doing a teaching and then still hearing God say something else. And they could be asking God something else. And you're like, well, where is they asking God? I don't see them asking God. They have mastered the mentality, the mental prayer, the mental conversation, the mental. If somebody right now put a gun to somebody's head and say, don't say a word, don't say a word. And you are attempting to get answers from the Lord on what to do next. You can ask the Lord with the mind. And the Lord would tell you, okay, say this, or don't do this, or don't do this, or just do like this. And the mental will be the place where you and the Lord are texting each other. Now, now I want you to remember that in order for you to get your inheritance, you are the one that's going to have to embrace the death of your feelings and what, what you want to do you have to embrace it people that do what they want all the time are fools the fools of the earth are those that chase pleasure the fools of the earth are those that chase pleasure the wise in the earth are those that chase the presence of Jesus. Chasing Jesus' presence and chasing pleasure are not the same thing. When you chase the presence of Jesus, you are pitting yourself aside for him to abide, for him to continue to do his will in you and around you. There is a wealthy place that God has for you right now in 2000. 2024 we're in 2024 and there is another wealthy place after you master that wealthy place so even how grand and how beautiful and how wonderful the scenery is of the wealthy place that god has for you there are more wealthy places that's why when you achieve promotion you don't get lazy when you achieve harvests you don't get lukewarm you don't get calm and you don't start to relax when i say don't get calm i don't mean the calmness of having the the perspective of peace but i'm talking about the calmness of no longer advancing that's what i mean that's the calmness that i'm talking about you don't let yourself relax you have to be militant minded one thing that I want to show you is that Israel, despite their intelligence, had a sneak attack on, this, on themselves. They were not ready for the attack. The prophetic wisdom that I want to show you is that, that how many times in, in a year, in a month, in a week, in a day, that Satan could sneak attack you. Satan can go beyond the intelligence that you have and still access harm to your emotions, access harm to your focus, access harm to your momentum. Israel was not ready to be attacked. They were not ready for the war. They were not ready and they were not looking at what the enemy had planned against them. I want you to start thinking about this. The, the next time you're praying, the next time you're praising God, I want a percentage of your mind to remember, I'm not going to be caught off guard. I'm praising and I'm thanking and I'm sowing this seed 
The next time you sow a seed, the next time you sow money, remember, I am not going to be caught off guard. I'm sowing this because I'm not going to be caught off guard. I'm praying because I'm not going to be caught off guard. I am thanking the Lord because I'm not going to be caught off guard. I'm serving because I'm not going to be caught off guard. I'm meditating the word because I'm not going to be caught off guard. 